643, your time. Stop and take a look at your screen. Do you recognize that guy on the right? Well, we are turning the spotlight to a journalism teacher at Greenwood High School, molding the minds of students for 50 years. That includes our own Carlos Diaz, who has a very special connection with her. Usually my interviews start with a question, but this interview to my good friend, Susan Edwards, is gonna start with a thank you. Thank you so much for all that you did for me, basically leading me into the world of journalism. And I'm already getting teared up just talking to you. I can't thank you enough for basically being responsible for my career. You're welcome and you'll make me cry now. So, <laughs> you know, get out the Kleenex. But I gave you an opportunity. I gave all my students an opportunity to have a voice, to be able to say what they needed to say. And you were one of those. And I remember you in class and it was always, Carlos, sit down, Carlos, <laughs> be quiet, Carlos, shut up. And I remember you told a class that you came and spoke for for me. You told them, you said, find something you're passionate about and find a way to make a living doing it. Yes. And that's exactly what happened with you. You have always been a storyteller. You were a wonderful storyteller. You had a great sense of humor and you just need an outlet. And you took it and you developed it into a fantastic career. Well, thank you. To your credit, as we both tear up here, yeah. it is to your credit, you didn't say no to that. You didn't try to push that down, you said, hey, I've got an outlet for you. It's called the school magazine. It's called the school newspaper. Let's channel all of this energy you have into that. How many times have you done that over your nearly 50 year career? I've lost track. <laughs> I've lost track. It's giving high school students an opportunity to explore what's here, to see where they fit in, kind of shine a light and say, you know, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, find your way to get there. And that's why I'm an educator. When did you start your career as a teacher in Greenland? I started teaching in 1970 down at Indian Creek and I spent two years there and then was recruited to come to Greenwood and this is where I grew up, this is home. This is my identity, this is who I am. I am an educator. I'm very proud to be an educator. I've never gotten tired. It's the kids that keep me going. They find that line and they walk right up to it try and push the limits and see how far they can go. The only thing, the principal's not calling me in and looking at me and handing me the school paper and saying, Carlos. Yeah, and speaking of which, by the way, I did uh, an article in the school paper called The World According to Carlos. That's right. And how many times did I push that envelope? You never went too far. Kids need to vent. You've got things you need to say. You see the world differently. Right. You have to have the opportunity to say that. And that was you. You always pushed the envelope, but you knew where the limit was. The difference was that you, when you dialed me back, you told me, why? Give me a rationale. Why? Give me a direction. I've always found students to be very open to that. That's where you were and I followed your career to New York, to Atlanta, to LA and I was thrilled when you came back to Indiana. That was a highlight. You're where you belong. I'm back here because of great people like you. And in full disclosure, you and I are still really good friends yes, here. Yes, we've become very good friends over the years. You're known as Aunt Susan to my kids. And uh, I love your kids beyond <laughs> words. What's it say about Greenwood that people are, are drawn back here? It still has a small town feel, even though Greenwood has grown and grown and grown, it still has that feel of welcoming people. It's a great hometown. The biggest change for students, this world has gotten too serious. It's gotten too scary. Students have so much riding on their shoulders, and I don't think they have as much fun at school as they used to. We had fun in the classroom right behind you. See that class back there? That was the publications room. That's right. And is that the key to make education fun? I think kids have to have fun. You know, what's my reason for doing this? How is this going to help me? And then it has to be enjoyable. So 31 years ago, my journalism career started here by working on the school paper. I hope I've done you proud. I am very proud of you. I've watched your career, very proud of what you do, and congratulations on being the anchor for the morning show. I mean, you're, you're perfect for that role. Four o'clock in the morning when I get up to get ready for school, you're on the TV, so I can start my morning with Carlos every day. Air hug. Air, Air hug. hug. There we Air go. Hug. <laughs> what an emotional piece right there and uh, she, Susan just texted me I'm gonna get sorry um, you know if it wasn't for Susan I wouldn't be where I'm at today and she just texted me and said that when she wakes up every morning at 4 a.m. to watch sunrise she's reminded of why she does what she does and for all you teachers out there who are looking to make a change in a young person's life Susan changed my life and got me into to, to journalism. And the journalists aren't supposed to be this emotional. Uh, but just know that all you teachers out there, you can make a difference in kids' lives uh, for the positive. And Susan Edwards, I just want to say thank you 
for making it a positive influence in my life.